All right, hello everyone. I'm Professor Caudill. Today we are on. Hmm, let's go ahead and start on 89 today. So we have a vector. So we want the projection of H onto G. Let me, I just want to double check this English. Uh, let's see. Section A onto B is rotated like G onto H. G onto H. Okay. All right, so we have three components. So we are taking three, four, <clears throat> sorry, three, four, ten. And we're going to cross that to one, four, zero. So to do this, we put it in our calculator. Okay, so projection of G onto H is it's going to be a two-dimensional vector so how did we find this we took g which is that dot h which is that I'm sorry, times h hat times h hat or h hat equals one four zero, so the original h times one over the magnitude of h. So that's going to be h square root of h dot h. So it's going to be um, 1 plus 16, 17. And I think that's how you would get that. All right. 90. Triangle if if C prime is drawn.
Okay, so I'm guessing we're going to use C squared equals A squared plus B squared plus A B cosine theta. That's one. That might be one way. I don't really know how to start with this. That's my guess. Uh, we use a midpoint. This is what the language model is saying. Where M B is a plus B yeah I don't really I don't really get it I'll be honest let's move on Distance between points in a plane do not change when it's coordinate when it's rotated. Magnitude is invariant. So we have a coordinate system, let's do a little checker thing, let's call this S. And let's say some transform of S equals 90 degrees five degrees Show that during transformation, the coordinates S are expressed in terms of S. It's like nothing, nothing's coming to my head on, on how to. Okay. Show the transformation of coordinate system. So we have this rotation matrix. So this is just rewritten. 
as that. So they pulled out these cosine sine as a matrix. Is it a negative sign? It's not. It's not not a negative sign. It's kind of weird. Um. Oh, it is a uh. They have them kind of swapped. It's kind of weird. Um. Yeah. Okay, that's weird. Show the point P and origin is invariant. Yeah, I don't I don't really uh don't really feel like I don't know. I'm not really They're too too challenging for me. Let's put it that way. So let's just move on. Chapter three. Motion. A long a straight line. So and so what is that? That's gonna be something is going to get moved in a vector like this train magnetic lev train on the yamanashi so we have we're on, we're going to be covering position displacement average velocity instant speed instant velocity so instantaneous speed and velocity what is instantaneous velocity in an instant so when you hear we hear this instant that means t is dt or You will excuse me. I have something in my, in my eye. Um, I think it went away. Okay, I think we're, I think I'm fine. <laughs> All right. So, t whatever t is, you're gonna take as t approaches infinity. Equals d t. So if it's one over t, as as t approaches infinity that's going to be your dt it's whatever is in the limit so velocity is equal usually your s for position dt motion with constant acceleration free fall so free fall is as gravity that's what is it 9.8 meters per second squared. So this is V squared. Or not V squared, that's dV dt. So gravity is a, so that's like, uh, that's like saying the second derivative of your velocity. So you could also say d2 s to d t squared equals d equals d v d t equals a for acceleration um so our universe is full of objects in motion so what is this positing this is classical physics so it's saying universe is one group 
and saying this group has subgroups like a cookie. And it's saying these groups are in motion. Now, some theories say the universe itself is in motion. And I don't know if that's true under Newton's law, but we're just going to simplify it and say our universe is stable, even though other theories might disagree that are more accurate, but we're, this is a, like, a, we're learning physics, so we have to simplify things to start, just, just to get going, you know? So our universe is full of objects and motions. We have objects. Everything has a vector. And <clears throat> it's, what I would like to know more about is how you, how to use describe a vector with dynamics. How does some vector x, y change over time, for example? Like usually we do a function f of x equals y. So what we're saying is we have some group. We have one set and each element of that set has a one-to-one -one correspondence. So that's a function. So this is a function so i'm wondering if we can if um we can just say uh, some vector function you know is that is, is that describing the same thing i think so um this this is a, uh, this is your three dimensional space, but R could be n dimensional space where it's, you know, a vector one, two, three, and one, two, three, where each element gets mapped. You know, so I'm wondering how the book's going to address that. So everything stars me in microscope. Everything is in motion. Everything's in motion. So that means everything has, I want to say everything has energy, but I don't know if that's, you know, I don't want to mislead anybody. Um, we can describe motion using dynamics and kinematics. Kinematics. We start, we study dynamics, but there's much to be learned. So what causes, so if you remember kinematics from high school, some words might come to mind like, uh, Potential, energy, that's like a spring coiled up, it's storing, and then kinematic, might be, you know, a, a gun shooting. That might be kinematic energy. K 
Schematics involves describing motion through position, time, velocity, acceleration. <clears throat> so one example is uh, Tokyo trains. With skills learned in this chapter, we can calculate these. Okay, so let's get into it. Position, displacement, average velocity. Calculate average velocity given the displacement and elapsed time. So when you're in motion, where are you? Where are you going? So, magnitude, direction. So, magnitude, direction. I'm just going to write calculus. Calculus. I hope that's spelled right. So, how do we combine vectors in calculus? I wonder if this is what the chapter addresses. So, the answers are position. Displacement, average velocity. So it's position X. So some people use X, some people use S. I, my calculus teacher, he used S as convention. Frame of reference is our reset axes from which the position and motion of an object are described. Earth is a frame of reference. For example, rocket launch could be described in terms of the position of the rocket with respect to Earth as a whole. Cyclist is in relation to the building they pass. If an object moves relative to a frame of reference, Where displacement implies the object has moved, displaced. Position is... Displacement is a change, so... Displacement is your delta S. I guess we can just we can borrow the book's notation. So X origin or not. So since displacement negates direction, it's a vector. So Displacement of the vector equals delta x times 
let's say a direction vector like u hat but we're in one dimension so it it will always be an i hat i believe okay and if you see this person is teleporting violating the laws no i'm just kidding <clears throat> um, displacement, two meters. Um, not seeing any absolute values. I think there might should there maybe there should be absolute values. I'm not sure. Delta is change. Delta change. We always do this. Always initial from final. Subtract the initial from the final. That is your displacement. Standing uses is a meter, but we use kilometers or others. Objects in motion have a series of displacements. So, x total equals the sum of all the change equals the integral of dx. Let's put a uh, put integral of x dx. Maybe approximately. Um, because if you know calculus, the definition. It it's included in that. Um, it's got some delta something, then it's got something here. I don't want to, I don't want to look it up at the moment. You can do that if you really want to know. So. So this makes sense if I go, if I start at five meters and I go four meters, that's delta x one. If I go four meters, four plus four, starting zero. Four plus four, I go two meters. It's going to be nine. It's going to be eight plus two is ten. Is nineteen. I'm not sure if, if I should do doing that. Um, two meters, and I should be subtracting them as well. Okay, so this is completely wrong. Okay, here we go. Magnitude is always positive.
Okay, so you take the absolute value of each individual, each individual. All right, velocity. So we're introduce time. For each position xi, we assign a particular time. So we assign a time from some function that maps xi's. So you have x1, x2, x3, t1, t2, t3. You have a function that assigns each to that. If the D, if the details of the motion be instant, if you don't need to know the instant, you can have the average velocity. So this is the total displacement. So we're going to say the integral of our displacement, integral delta dx Uh, what's the formula for integral of Um, so one way is to do T not E F <clears throat> B average What is V? Maybe it can expand on this a little bit more. Okay, so. So here's, this is where the book's getting. So we're going to use the book's notation. V average T. And here we're seeing this convention, this position S. T, F. S T not T F minus T not. So using these two equations, you should be able to find the uh, total displacement. So let's try this. Jill sets out from her home. She's doing she's going east, so she goes. So uh, let's write some vectors. So let's let's write this x. Let's write this. This is her position, this is her time, so position, 
So she goes 0. 0.5. at nine minutes. Then she goes 0.5 in the ops opposite direction. So we were being tricky we could write i negative i but it shouldn't really matter in this context then she goes 1 15 Okay, so maybe this should be plus zero plus nine, nine plus nine. Okay, uh, I, don't know. I think maybe I'm making it harder than it needs to be. At this point, she returns back to her house, heading west. Then she goes 1.75. That takes 25 minutes. Okay, what is her total displacement? total displacement so we're going to take the integral from 0 to Insert above. Where are we? Where we are in total dis so we want to find total displacement. Okay, total displacement, so we have S define How do I want to do this? And simply, I do. I write a function.
what can you do with this? Now we're getting off track, just bear with me. Okay, so yes, yeah, so none of this is what I want. So I just want to find total displacement. So find positions. So S equals matrix five. Okay, and Now this is a elapsed time, so it should be, I think it should be zero plus nine. Then this is nine plus nine. This should be 18 plus 15. And this should be 33. Um, that okay so goals 58 okay T What is her magnitude? What is her displacement? What is her total displacement? Okay, so we just want to make sure
So at nine minutes, he's gone half a mile, 18 minutes. He's gone negative a mile, 33 minutes. He's gone another mile, 58. He goes at one hour, he goes, another, he's gone another. I don't think this is necessarily right. I think the book's going to do something a lot different. Okay, so... T1 is 9, 18, 37, 9, 5, 18 is... Okay, so we got the time right, we got the position wrong. Um, Okay, so So, this is kind of a new feature. It makes the output. That's kind of cool. I don't think I've seen that before. So distance is that okay. So you're summing 0.5, 0, this and that.
Full displacement. Distance traveled three point seven kilometers. Okay, so is that right? 0 0.29, 0 0.013 kilometers a minute. Okay, total distance. Add this to add a graph. Out of time.
I'm leg one. Should be nine. Okay, I guess we can't graph. So it's kind of like a graph we got. Horizontal, vertical. Okay, so we're kind of close. We need to work on this a little bit more, but... Um, Think of it. I think I can. I could probably fix it myself. Oh, uh, this is frustrating. Let's see.
their graph starts at, so it goes up to point, it should be going up to point 0.5. So we need to work on this some more. We need to stop here though. So thanks for hanging out. Um, yeah, we got some tools. We got some tools in progress. Uh, I'm trying to make something like a, like a general tool that uh, makes, makes doing these a lot faster. But all right, thank you guys. I'll see you.